birthday to Stephen Curry as Dub Nation is thrilled with the Warriors winning their eighth straight game at Chase Center. They've won 12 and 13 in this building, and they roll over the Phoenix Suns on the strength of a strong first quarter, which they score 43 points. They held off for dear life there in the third quarter, but they get the W. They head out on the road for a five-game trip. They look good about themselves as we welcome everybody to Warriors Post Game Live, presented by Toyota Live here at the Gatehouse at Thrive City. Dub Nation's going cuckoo. We got the Hall of Famer, <laughs> Chris Mullen, NBA chat, Fessis Azili, I am Bonte Hill. Clay got going early. Steph got going alongside JP late. And the Warriors get a nice, a much-needed win against the Phoenix Suns for the first time all season. Okay, so I I'm starting to believe that there's something about this building and this fan base that really gets this team going. You know what they do. The Splash Brothers put the ball in the basket, but they don't need any extra motivation. But if you say Clay is washed up, at the, like they did at the start of the season, Devin Booker said that to Clay. He doesn't forget that. And right now, Clay is super hot, 18 points in the first quarter. And this team was just riding on Clay's back in the first half. They got off to a great start. We've been talking about that this whole, this whole run. The Warriors have been getting off the slow starts. Well, they fixed that. And now you can ride on that to the end of the game. And I'd love to see the aggression, the focus that they had this game coming in and the aggression leak, just licked onto the rest of the game. It just shows just how important the start of the game is. Uh, that first quarter they dominated, just said, Bonte 43-21. Go off to a great start, which they haven't been doing. Uh, but they've been digging holes for themselves. The middle quarters actually got outscored by 12. Right. But what was the key was the end of the third quarter. 11 to 2 run to cut. It was a 26 13. Uh, the Suns cut it to three point game. Uh, the, the game was in the balance, but that finished the third quarter was everything along with that first quarter. Uh, but that, that, that 25 point cushion, when things got a little dicey, mm -hmm. Steph took over in the second half. Uh, I just thought they really was a, a blue collar win. A, an important win as they go out on the road down. Yeah, the Warriors now approved to 28-7 inside the Chase Center, but we all know about their road record, 7-26. We'll get to that. We'll get to that a little bit later, but our ad in turning point tonight was that third quarter run, Bully. It was a 15-6 overall run that bled into the fourth quarter. Look at the Suns were rolling, 24-10 right there. JP with a nice layup there, but it was 87-84, and Chase Center was getting a little tight. But that was a timely three right there by Jordan Poole, who scored 15 points in the second half. A crazy basket right here by Andrew Goddard. Big bucket. Fessy, I don't even know if he was looking at the basket, but it counts, and he'll take it. And you see Steph Curry here, great defense on Devin Booker. Jordan Poole in the corner, goes right by campaign, finishes with the layup. And that was important there to get Jordan Poole rolling before they go out on the road. You see a monster threat right there by Draymond Green. So that game right there was in the balance late in the third quarter, and the Warriors were able to weather the storm and not let that 25-point lead dwindle away. Basketball is a game of runs, and they made the run, the comeback there in the second and the third quarter. But a few things that I saw there for the Warriors is the big man really got active. DeAndre Ayton, they, they just they, they said, we're not shooting threes anymore. We're going inside to the big fellas, and big fella DeAndre Ayton in the third quarter had 11 points. You have Josh Okogia, who they were letting shoot. He had seven points in that third quarter. But I got to give a lot of credit to the Warriors because they really fought back there at the end of the third, started making plays, taking care of the ball. This game, they had 14 turnovers. So they did not give them any extra baskets there. But their, the offensive rebounds for the Suns, that was some of the ways they were able to get back into the game. But the Warriors took control of, that, of the game in the fourth quarter, the end of the third, into the fourth quarter, and they had that really nice win there. Yeah, and Fistus mentioned they were laying off a lot of perimeter shooters. Uh, in turn, they dominated the three-point line. 19 mates for the Warriors, just four for the Suns, a plus 45 from the three-point line. It helped the defense. They were slacking off, uh, and, and, you know, Devin Book is such a dynamic scorer, but he'd much rather play driving straight line drive to the basket. He loves his pull-up game, so the three-point line, the Warriors dominated that, and that's what won the game for them. Booker only attempted two threes tonight. He was 0 for 2 for the Phoenix Suns as we, as we flash it back to October. It's way back when. It feels like it was two years ago. But, of course, Clay Thompson and Devin Booker got into it back on October 25th in Phoenix, the first matchup between the two clubs. And Clay, who was trying to find himself. Remember, he didn't oh, have a training this. camp. Uh, he did practice all summer long. He was trying to get his legs under him, and he was struggling at that point. But he had to remind Devin Booker that, hey, I'm a four-time champ. And I'm going to be around for a while as this was a battle of two of the top two shooting guards in the NBA. And Devin Booker said after the game, he kept saying, four rings, four rings. And I get it. He's got four rings. Since then, though, <laughs> Clay Thompson has been falling as he's our Nissan difference maker for tonight. 33 of his 38 points came in the first half. He was hooping. I mean, he was going crazy. 
his fifth 30 point half of his career 14 to 23 overall eight threes all in that first half for clay Thompson, bully yeah and getting off to a great start was so important the warriors have not been doing that and that cushion is what really got this win for the warriors and clay thompson was just incredible his efficiency off the charts knocking down eight of 12 three-point shots uh, you know, again, getting off to that lead meant everything to, in tonight's game. You know, one thing I will say is, as basketball players, you take pride in moments like this. When somebody's calling you out, when you have a moment, when you have a little bit extra motivation, you can see it in Clay's steps. Everything, you saw the whole package. He's in the post, he's out there on the three-point line with the ball at the top of the key. He's doing it all tonight for this Warriors team on the offensive end. And, you know, I just love seeing the extreme shot making this team has. And this is Clay Thompson. Steph Curry is also in there doing the same thing. So this team is starting to get their rhythm on the offensive end, and I love watching both of them just go crazy like they did tonight. And we look at that clip from October in Phoenix. As you said, Bonte, Clay Thompson was working way into shape, uh, and you could tell the confidence he had that it was going to happen for him. And now you look at January, February, and March, putting together some of the best three months of his career. He's a different player. This is a different team. Uh, and obviously, Phoenix has changed quite a bit, too, adding Kevin Durant. So uh, a nice home win. I don't think it really says a whole lot if they match up in the playoffs, which some people, th that may happen very likely. Um, but they need to pile up these wins to keep up in that six, five, maybe four spot in the playoffs. Clay Thompson, strong first half, helped the Warriors build a 25-point lead that they did not relinquish the rest of the way. Let's go back inside the Chase Center via WebEx by Cisco to the great KB, Kareth Burke, who has more on Clay Thompson, who led the way with 38 points tonight. KB, take it away. Yeah, I want to get in on this conversation, too. I was looking at Clay's stat line from the Bucks. He attempted 16 shots from the field in that game, and that was an overtime game. By halftime, Clay Thompson had attempted 18 shots in this one, arriving at 33 points at halftime with eight three-pointers. So you know he had something invested in this game. He wanted to get going, and he did. And I think big picture for Clay, I saw some of the same things that you guys did, right? He wants to compete, and whether he feels like he's had a bad game previously against an opponent or whether he hears just disrespect at large, Clay is going to compete, whether that's against Booker, you know, the guy he tangled with when he got the first ejection of his career. <laughs> I'm glad you showed the video as Clay counted one, two, three, four rings right there. Or whether it's against CP3, or whether it's against an old teammate like D. Lee, or whether it's just against a Western Conference opponent that the Warriors want to beat this season. So Klay Thompson playing his role, arriving at those 38 points. So five points in the second half, but that's okay. No matter there, right? The defense had to cover him. He had that fireball start in this game, and then other guys scored within the flow of the offense. Klay played his role in this win, and it was a big one for Golden State. No doubt about that. Thank you, KB. We'll see you a little later for a little Doves Talk Live. It's Clay Thompson feeling good on the way to L.A. we got to talk about the birthday boy, though, Stephen Curry, because he set the tone Saturday night when he came back home off of that three-game road trip, killing Milwaukee the last seven minutes of that game with 22 points. And then tonight, look, the Splash Brothers scored 30 of the first 35 points for the go to State Warriors and another efficient night as all eyes are on Stephen Curry. We check out his performance on the eve of his 35th birthday. I can't believe he's 35 years old, Bully. 23 <laughs> points tonight to 7 and 13 as Phoenix made it a point to make sure he didn't get off a lot of threes. And look, when you look at the locker room, you look at the box score, just six three-point attempts for Stephen Curry. He gets that in six minutes. So Phoenix got to feel good about that, but he was efficient. He got everybody else involved. Yeah, he can get that in six minutes if needed. Uh, the awareness of Steph Curry that Clay Thompson was on fire in the first half, and that's where the focus was. That's get tough. Clay as many touches as possible. You look at the seven rebounds, you look at the five assists, and Bonte, a lot of times when, when you know whether it's Draymond, Andre Iguodala, those fake handoffs that they get wide open, wide open shots. That's Steph Curry's gravity. So whether he's scoring big numbers. The fact that he's on the floor, moving out the basketball, opens up so many opportunities for his teammates. This is like really... Any coaches, by the way. Yeah, this is teaching Kitty Atkinson. I'm telling you guys, this is inspired <laughs> basketball by Steph Curry. And I, he said during the game to, to Chris Paul, he said, this is not 2014 anymore. Every basketball player, we all have a chip on our shoulders, and we know exactly what inspires us to get to this point. Steph Curry understands that it goes all the way back to Chris Paul with the Clippers. I want to know what play that was. Was that a high okay, pick listen, listen, is, is that elevators? Throw the ball to Clay Thompson. <laughs> no. He's throwing if it take, hey, Think about this. If it takes that long to draw that play up, 
Imagine trying to guard it. <laughs> That's Steph running around the floor through flare screens, down screens, and the elevator. So screen. like little zigzag. Yeah, exactly. All the different ways that he scores the basketball. We talk about him off the ball, the things that he does. Everybody wants to be Steph Curry, but they think that Steph Curry is just shooting threes, launching threes. But what he does without the basketball is way more important to this team. The way he can get his teammates open, he sets great screens. Got a couple offensive fouls there. That's our, that's our guard trying to get physical on the screens. These are the things that this team needs all across the board for them to get wins. And it's, it's really urgent right now for this team. And you know what else they need, Bully, is to, for Jordan Poole to get back on track in his last five games coming in. Two tonight, he shot 25% from the three-point line. But I thought he had a nice, efficient second half. Six of 13 in the second half after finishing the first with just five points. He finished with 20 overall. And that's a key for the Warriors down the stretch without Gary Payton the second, without Jonathan Kuminga, without Andrew Wiggins. Get this type of mm, production from JP up, is man. huge, Fezzy Fell. I just love the confidence that Jordan Poole has. You know, he has struggled of late, but he doesn't stop attacking. And for you and any 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 Warriors fan, you have to be excited about that because you know, in any moment, just like Klay Thompson went crazy tonight and Steph Curry goes can go crazy, you have a guy in Jordan Poole who's also very lethal from three. And so with his speed and quickness, as he continues to learn how to use it and when to pick his spots, he's going to be so lethal for this Warriors team come to playoffs because he's another one of the great playmakers on this team that can get guys involved in the game. He's just learning how to do that right now. 20 points to him for him tonight. It's just a great start for him as we go on the road. And the six assists. The six assists, 50% uh, from the field, 50% from the free, uh, from the three-point line. And to me, you know, as Steve Kerr has, has uh, messed with the lineup a little bit the last few weeks, I think he really wants Jordan Poole to lock in. He's going to be the, the difference maker off the bench. Um, you know, he's starting Dante DiVincenzo in for Andrew Wiggins. Uh, but I think that's a great role for, for Jordan Poole. And between now and the playoff time, really get locked in. When you come in that game, you know, I thought when, when you see a guy shoot 50% from the field, that means he's taking good shots, good shot selection, and he's patient. He's not forcing things. And I think he's getting more comfortable in that role. Uh, and, and we all know if this team's going to make a deep run into, into June, Jordan Poole is going to have to have a huge impact. Coming off that postseason experience from the season to go, yes. where he helped the Warriors win their fourth championship. But overall, as a team, in that first quarter, he shot 72% from the field and 72% from the three-point line. We've been waiting on these faster starts. Again, you mentioned it in the pregame show. They hadn't had a lead after the first quarter until Saturday night against Milwaukee. It was a month since they had a lead after the first quarter. Well, we've been asking for that. And the Warriors have been listening. And now it's playoff time. Now it's time to start gearing up for the playoffs. And you understand that it, you just dig yourself in a hole. It's a dig yourself in a hole and have to climb out of it. It takes so much more energy, Mully. And so they are trying to gear up for the playoffs. And with that, they understand that fast starts are the key. And the Warriors came out shooting lights out tonight. And, and we talk about it all the time, the Warriors' ability to play traditional pick-and-roll offense where, where Steph or, or the point guard has the ball. But within the same game, to have Draymond play point forward and have people, uh, Steph and Clay running off the ball, really tough assignments uh, defensively. And this Phoenix Suns team came in the sixth-rated defense right. in the league. They didn't look like in that first quarter. No, no doubt. They looked like they were 35th rated defense. <laughs> they won four in their last five without Kevin Durant, of course. So no Kevin Durant, no problem for the Golden State Warriors. Let's discuss Draymond Green tonight. Draymond Green has played terrific back basketball all season. A lot of people get distracted with some of the off-court stuff, the podcast and the everything. But you see Draymond Green, you see him in that final box score. It doesn't look pretty. You know, you look at the box score, four points, six rebounds, four assists. Just three field goal attempts, but he was barking on defense, three block shots, setting screens, and he was into it tonight, Fezzi. There's an old adage that says, it's not everything that you can count that counts, and not everything that counts can be counted. And that's what okay, Draymond Bowen. Green brings to the game. It, it, the, the, you know, he does all the little things for this team. He understands when to double team Devin Booker. He understands when to go get a big rebound. He understands these are all the little things that he does in the floor of the game that might not count in the box score, but he's a winner. We saw it last game against the Milwaukee Bucks. Strained, strained ankle, whatever it was, he came right back into the game, understanding the urgency and the, the effect that he has on this team. Moving the basketball, sharing the basketball, his chemistry with Clay and Steph is incredible. He's the guy that gets the ball on the block, and he gets those assists to them on the split cut, gets those easy baskets for those guys. When they get rolling like that, that's a lot of those screens that Draymond Green sets as well. So those are things, you know, as a big man, I, I get excited when I see the big man getting, effect, getting his effect on the game. So I can see all those little things, but Draymond Green is such a huge cog in this wheel, and it's, I got to give him his roses okay yeah and when you when you're guarding players like Devin Booker uh, Chris Paul 
DeAndre Ayton. It's a team effort. And that, that all is predicated on Draymond Green and Kevon Looney communicating. First and foremost, playing uh, in post-defense. But with, with offenses these days, they're spread out. There's dribble handoffs. There's so much switching going on. They've got to communicate all that stuff. So defensively, he clears all that up for the Warriors every night. And then offensively, the ability, as I said earlier, to have Steph handle the ball and play high pick and roll. But most importantly, the, the toughest thing to guard within the same game is when Draymond Green's playing point forward. Mm. You have Steph and Clay running off screens. You have a third and fourth squad in Jordan Poole, Dante DiVincenzo. The floor is so spread out, and Draymond Green just makes so, so many great decisions uh, to get his teammates shots. You get another nine points and seven rebounds from Jamichael Green. Now he's starting to stack up some good uh, good minutes here for the Golden State Warriors moving forward. And they head out on the road coming up next. We'll discuss it a little bit later, but first we'll hear from Steve Kerr on the other side and here for more as the Warriors beat the Suns. They went two in a row here before heading out on the road.